Welcome back, everyone, to another Hearts of Iron 4 Kaiserreich Guide. And this time, as you can see, it is the American Union State, the other revolting uh, state. One of the two main ones uh, that comes out of the American Civil War. Now, I'm sure you know all about how to get um, playing as the American Union State. All you need to do is not avoid the Civil War and then select them uh, for an event. And uh, not avoiding a civil war is relatively easy. Now, um, the American Union state is Huey Long's creation. Alright, uh, so let's get this going. First of all, let's actually get out of the way how you actually win the civil war as the American Union state. Now, um, you start off with a relatively large army, but a low industry, and uh, you are weaker than both of your opponents, although this time I um, I made it so, um, you know, when I was playing as the United States, um, it would end up with uh, MacArthur as uh, the leader, and to do that you need to select uh, as a president Jack Reed or uh, Huey Long. If you want the Civil War to be the hardest possible, uh, you probably want to do uh, to elect um, Floyd Olson as the president uh, of the National Unity Party. Um, I let them form here, but I didn't make them win this, the elections. Uh, but yeah, because if you if you have um, if you select Reed or Huey as uh, the president, then the Pacific states are gonna break free because they don't like MacArthur. Uh, they don't like MacArthur seizing uh, Washington, and they think he wants to destroy democracy. So they're gonna rise up to defend democracy. Uh, another alternative would be to elect, uh, to let the Democrats uh, or the Republicans win, in which case you're still going to have a united um, USA, it's just going to be weaker than if you are the National Unity Party. Yeah, anyway, it uh, doesn't matter all that much because, again, regardless, as I've said, uh, the American Union state is pretty much one of the weaker um, factions, although it's not the weakest. Um, the weakest would be the PSA, obviously, and New England. But yes, of the big three, you are the weakest. And uh, the way that I would recommend you, if you have problems winning the American Civil War, now I'm not sure whether or not this is this is just normal difficulty, but uh, if you want, you can go on my channel. I've streamed a campaign as the AUS, and I have won quite handily uh, by 1939 on a veteran. Um, yeah, essentially what you need to do is that, uh, okay, so your army starts off in composition, you have a bunch of militias, some of them are bad militias, some of them are decent militias, although actually, no, never mind, uh, that was the, uh, that was the CSA, um, and you start with a few garrison divisions, which, uh, they don't really matter, but, like, the real core of your army is gonna be these veteran infantry, uh, divisions, and uh, the veteran infantry divisions are 19, and uh, you want to be building more ASAP, and you want to upgrade them as quickly as possible. And what you want to do is you, you want to put them, uh, like just the rest of the army, except um, the motorized and the infantry, just needs to, you know, be defensive. And then you put the infantry in North Carolina and Virginia. Uh, sorry, Tennessee and North Carolina. So to advance into Virginia and Kentucky. Uh, the reason why you want to do that is that you want one part of your uh, army to take this area so that you cut off uh, the Federals from uh, from Washington, like from Washington to the Midwest, right? Because you don't want these two to be able to connect and uh, transfer troops and uh, supply each other. So that takes care of the feds, and then after that, you want to get um, essentially moving towards Washington uh, and reduce the Ameri uh, the uh, USA control all the way there. And then you want to push in two directions. You want to push in one direction towards Cleveland and then another towards Chicago so that you can destroy the uh, combined syndicates. Once you have dealt with this part, you're gonna be left with just, uh, you know, hundreds of American divisions um, on this side. Oh, and another thing that you want to do is that uh, you want to take South Texas as soon as possible because it is uh, uh, plains, right? So it's 
Like, the only defense over here is the Rio Grande River. Uh, or, actually, no, the Rio Grande is this one. Uh, I'm not sure, actually, what river this is, but... Yeah, there's only a river for defense, and uh, there's a few factories and a lot of oil over here, so... That's going to... Oh. Oops. That's going to definitely help you out. Um, so yeah, one thing that... Right, what I actually did the first time was I... Uh, was I sent my infantry down here, although what you can do is I guess you can send like, you know, five or six infantry divisions down here so that you can take care of the militias uh, and then reach up to like El Paso in the mountains and form a defensive line, then get everyone else to uh, do the advance in you know, Virginia and uh, Kentucky. So yeah, that's how you win the Civil War. Um, uh, I do have some saves while the Civil War is ongoing so that I can show you exactly what I was doing. Uh, like this one. And, um, yeah, so you do that, and then uh, you're, you're gonna get a few events during the Civil War, uh, and a couple of them are actually relatively important. You need to um, pay a bit of attention. But we're gonna get to them once we get to the politics session. Anyway, uh, so you can see what, what I did, right? So I pushed all the way to Chicago, although they retook it right now. Um, and uh, cleared, yeah, here like I had the National Unity Party win, so as you can see they still have California, which means that they still have a lot of stuff, despite the fact that they took huge losses um, in the Midwest, sorry, not the Midwest, in like the, the strip that they control, um, and in the East. So yeah, the, another good thing about uh, pushing them into Washington and Baltimore is that the volunteers that arrive from uh, a lot of countries, because a lot of countries generally will like the USA government rather than anyone else. Like the AUS sometimes gets uh, German, sometimes gets Austrians, um, sometimes gets uh, like maybe... No, no, no. Everyone else pretty much supports the USA. Yeah, like... You know, sometimes you get something, but usually a lot of the democracies and uh, authoritarian right-wing states are going to support the USA. While, obviously, the syndicalist countries will support the CSA. And the volunteers will all go to Washington, uh, because, you know, that's the port that's closer to them. And so you can kind of bottle them up here and just uh, make them useless for the entirety of the Civil War. Uh, and then you just push up here, and uh, the combined syndicates should capitulate relatively quickly after you take Chicago and Detroit, and a few of, of the other cities, and then you can just push west. Uh, so let's just go to where I have finished the Civil War. Over here. Uh, so, uh, now we need to talk about the politics of the US. So it's Huey Long's creation, however, um, the ruling party, the America First Party, which is Huey's coalition that he put together, um, is to say, you know, uh, say that it's a big tent is, well, it's putting it lightly, because your buddies in, you know, in crime are um, essentially the Southern Democrats, uh, which... Um, if you make some wrong decisions as the USA can end up supporting uh, the AUS. Now, in case you do not know, uh, in this era before essentially the civil rights movement, uh, the Democrats were not really the left-wing party in the United States, although they did have a progressive wing. They were mostly a um, socially conservative uh, right-wing southern party, right? Uh, it was like a lot of the Democrats were in favor of segregation and stuff. So that was before essentially uh, before in the civil rights movement you had that you have the switch and the Republicans become the conservative party. But, you know, we're not getting uh, too mired into that. Uh, so yeah, uh, some of them support you. Uh, and that's actually represented because they have, you do have a tiny Democratic Party popularity, which means that they do have an influence in government. Uh, of the conservative branch, not the liberal branch. 
Uh, and then you have the America First Party, which also has a couple of buddy buddies, uh, aka the War Powers Committee and the Silver Legion. Now, who are these people? Now, uh, the America First Party is Huey Long's party. It is a kind of populist, uh, populist coalition in a way. Uh, it's like pretty much economically uh, reformist, basically social democrats on steroids. Uh, you're gonna see that when we look at the focus tree. The War Powers Committee is basically the opposite. It's a uh, committee of industrialists and military officials that uh, support Huey Long's nationalism, but not his economic policies. And then you have the Silver Legion, which is also a extreme nationalist organization, but it is basically just a fascist, you know, a white supremacist, crazy group. Um, and so, yeah, like, Huey himself is basically uh, socially progressive, politically nationalist, and economically uh, very, very populist, very reformist. Whereas the War Powers Committee, socially conservative generally, economically extreme liberal, or, uh, well, at the time, liberal meant conservative, uh, in today's terms, and uh, politically nationalist, civil religion, nationalist, socially just reactionary full on, and uh, economically depends. It can be both populist and uh, just basically corporatist, which uh, means that they want to merge the state and the big, uh, big economic entities. Although Huey Long also kind of wants to do that. He's more, again, uh, for redistribution, whereas the um, Silver Legion isn't really all that much about the redistribution of wealth. So, uh, the other two sort of uh, forces behind the AUS will generally want to remove Long if they think he goes too far, because as it says in the description over here, some would say that his share our wealth program is just cynicalism and new clothing. Um, yeah, pretty much. So, if we take a look at um, one of the events that you get over here. Um, now, this uh, is relatively important. There's other two events that happen during the Civil War, depending... Uh, well, that have to deal with the Silver Legion and the War Powers Committee. And you need to accept... Um, you need to, if you want to have one of these in power, you need to accept their help, right? Because otherwise, they're just you know, not going to be part of the coalition. Uh, so that the Silver Legion is going to say, well, we like uh, pledge allegiance to Long or whatever, you need to accept them. And uh, the War Powers Committee uh, offers to essentially like relocate some of the northern uh, industrial um, northern industrial uh, facilities that they own to the south so that they can support the war effort of the AUS. So you need to say yes to both of those, I think. Uh, if you know, if it doesn't matter, then uh, I'm wrong. But that's as far as I understand it. Then after the Civil War is over, as you can see, uh, you're gonna get an event called the American Legion appointment. Now the American Legion is um, basically like the uh, like United States Civilian Association of Veterans in a way. As far as I'm concerned, uh, let's see if I'm wrong. Yeah, wartime veterans service organization. I am not advocating patriotism. Okay, so it's basically just a military organization, and um, you're gonna get to choose who is the leader because the former leader Smedley Butler joins the combined syndicates actually, and uh, he's the leader of the combined syndicates military. But uh, you can appoint either Fox Corner, uh, who is a Huey uh, Long supporter. Let's see, can he actually be the uh, no, he cannot be. Uh, cannot be vice president. Yeah, here he has Fox Connor, infantry proponent. Uh, Georg, uh, George, or George Van Horn Mosley, uh, who is the leader of the War Powers Committee. You can see here he's the chief of staff. Or William Dudley Pelly, who is obviously the leader of the Silver Legion. Let's see if we can find him anywhere. 
can he be a minister? Doesn't look like it. <laughs> ah, well, uh, so uh, this is important because it um, essentially which path you're going to take relies upon what you appoint. So if you want to stay as Huey Long, aka the new Washington, you want to appoint Fox Connor. Um, if you want the business plot to happen, aka have the War Powers Committee take over, uh, you need to appoint Mosley. Or if you want mine eyes have seen the glory, uh, aka the Silver Legion National Populists, you need to appoint William Pelly. So uh, let's say, for example, I wanted the business plot, I'm gonna appoint Mosley. And uh, in a bit, you're gonna get another event. Let's see if I have the save already, so that I do not. Uh, no, I don't. Oh well, uh, so that I do not have to wait. But in a bit, you're gonna get another event uh, about a couple of bills that you're gonna need to pass. So, like, you can obviously choose the capital. Um, a couple of bills that you need to pass essentially the, uh, the prohibition bill and the veterans bill. Yeah, look at that, we're the last America standing. America! So, like, you're staying as the American Union state. Anyway, so there there you go, the special session of Congress. So, um, essentially, uh, if you want to pass these bills, the Prohibition and Veterans bills, you need to do this together, uh, you need to do them together to get enough support for both of them uh, from people that normally don't like each other. And uh, if you do not pass the bills, um, the Southern Democrats are going to be pissed because you haven't passed prohibition, and the military is going to be pissed because you haven't passed the veterans bill. So you get that, and after a while, you're going to get an event. Uh, now, I'm not sure how long is it going to take, but... Uh, just in case it takes forever, let's start actually by reviewing the focuses. Oh, here we are. So you get a midnight dinner. Uh, and basically, if you have chosen Mosley, uh, you're going to get the War Powers Committee essentially disappearing Huey Long. Now, they blame the syndicalists or whatever to have kidnapped the beloved president. Um, and so Mosley needs to be interim president. And uh, here you are. Uh, now, after a while, you're going to get a bunch of events um, that have to deal with the business plot. And um, essentially, after a while, uh, like, you're going to declare that, you know, Long hasn't been seen for too long. Ha ha ha. The Syndicalists have taken him over, and so Mosley just, you know, just has to be the permanent president now. And uh, essentially, uh, this whole path, we'll get to see it later, but uh, yeah, this is the premise. The other option for Pelly, we take a look at the Knight of the Long Knives, uh, which, uh, you know, is a relatively obvious reference. If you've chosen Pelly as the leader of the American Legion and you haven't passed the, uh, the Veterans Bill, you're gonna get the Knight of the Long Knives, uh, or the Knights of the Long Knives, but essentially, like, this is completely the opposite as to the uh, War Powers Committee, because the War Powers Committee uh, does things by intrigue and stealth, whereas the Silver Legion are a bunch of thugs. So they just come in and gun Long down because he's a syndicalist traitor, apparently. So yeah, you can read this if you want, but yeah, to hell with traitors. So he, he is in prison for like two hours, Forced to confess that he is a syndicalist and uh, murdered, and so Pelly becomes the new leader of America. Uh, so you can see already that it's kind of really different between the business plot and uh, the uh, the whatchamacallit, the Silver Legion. Um, we're gonna get to it in a bit, but yeah, this is um, how you get Pelly. Okay, so um, now we need to take a look at the focus trees to actually see, uh, you know, to get you to decide <laughs> which of these factions you actually want to pick. So, um, 
Now this part of Focus G is kind of boring, uh, nothing new. Although actually this part is... Like, actually I've never tried the League of American States now, did I? Yeah, actually no, I've never tried this before. Hmm. That's good. Uh, <laughs> I am prepared. Oh well, I yeah, because I've never played full campaign as long, so I've never I've never gone to here. Oh well. Uh, anyway, the America broad over here is just the adjoining Yantan most of the time, and um, you know making sure that America's great and uh, American economy is uh, you know carrying its weight in the world. Um, Fight for America, you've seen this a million times, it's the same as the others, um, same as the CSA, same as the USA, same as the American Air Force and the American Navy, same for everyone. Um, we're building the country, we're going to get to it in a bit. Um, yeah, so we get to um, the three different factions, actually no, let's take a look at the economy first, because you're going to probably be picking this first most of the time. So there's two of them, there's the National Recovery Administration uh, and the Military Industrial Compress. Now the NRA can only be picked by Long and Pelly, while the MIC can only be picked by Mosley and Pelly. So Pelly can pick both of these. So that's why I say that he's relatively flexible in that. Now the NRA is uh, essentially big uh, public works, state capitalism kind of stuff, state um, agricultural subsidies, price controls, um, you know, public works in general. And uh, one funny part is that uh, you get, where is it? Mm. There was a kind of funny part over here. Yeah, like this one, the Farm Security Administration. Uh, so, like, um, Huey Long's power base and also Pelly's power base consists in uh, the poor rural population of the South in a lot of the cases uh, for different reasons, but they are there. Uh, and so, <laughs> you get to essentially resettle uh, excess surplus farmers to the north, to the steel belt, where essentially you're expropriating uh, most likely some of the commercial estates that are around here because they're the ones that uh, maybe did not support you, uh, or maybe they're like with the War Powers Committee and uh, maybe Huey Long doesn't like them. So, yeah, that's kind of funny. Um, yeah, and the military industrial complex is what it says on the box. It's the military industrial complex, there's essentially. Um, Taylorism and Fordism, it's a big uh, sort of uh, theme of it all, and uh, what's kind of funny here is that uh, you have like, okay, so th this is kind of uh, one of the interesting parts about the military uh, industrial complex and the war powers committee as a whole, is that they are like very much economically free market when it comes to America itself, but when it comes to uh, international trade and investment coming into America, they're very protectionist. So here there is, um, uh, there's like inflation control, right? Um, and uh, one thing you can do is, uh, where is it? Yeah, uh, tariff on imported arms for, you know, to protect the domestic military industry. And there's also the corporate militarism, which is fucking hilarious because we shall offer surplus military goods to companies looking to relocate back into dangerous areas. Because, you know, that's a great idea. Let's just give the corporations a bunch of guns. And uh, so, yeah, you have private militaries running around, essentially. That's uh, that's the subtext over there. Um, yeah, building grants, all that kind of stuff. So that's basically what you do. Then there's uh, the main political trees, there's three of them. Um, so if you're going with Huey Long, what you're gonna get is essentially uh, on the right side, there's economic populism, uh, pretty much, every man a king, and uh, sharing the wealth. Uh, now, everyone gets a, basically a universal basic income. Um, $2,000 a year might not sound like much, but back then inflation 
hadn't made uh, the currency as uh, sort of again inflated as it is. So two thousand dollars a year. I, I'm not sure the conversion, um, like data in detail, but I'm pretty sure it's relatively okay. Um, and yeah, uh, you also have the education for the masses, which is kind of based on what Yu Long did in Louisiana in real life. Uh, he was big on uh, providing education for everyone. Uh, so that's why I'm saying that like, Huey Long is very much social democrat, just extraordinary, right? Uh, he's basically social democrat except even more uh, radically uh, interventionist economically and socially. Um, he has anti-accumulation laws. Incomes are capped at 5.1 million. So you cannot... Um, like everything that is above that for a businessman, you're going to have to give over to the government to redistribute and to invest again in the National Recovery Administration. So, you know, making uh, making the accumulation of capital essentially a state business uh, rather than uh, rather than a private thing. Uh, now, that's also why I'm saying that uh, essentially Long does have some corporatism in him is because... I mean, he kind of turns the state into this big economic actor. Um, and yeah, you on the left side have essentially uh, the imperial presidency. Now, Long himself is kind of a nepotist, uh, strongman kind of person. He rules by decree. Uh, and uh, he just he makes the new democracy, which is kind of funny because it's a reference to Mao Zedong. Uh, it might be another reference, but uh, Mao Zedong also used the term new democracy to essentially uh, describe the you know Chinese Communist Party's system of political governance. Essentially, democracy at the low level and uh, kind of autocracy at the top. So you still have uh, concentration and executive uh, executive decision making, and yeah. So essentially, Long is a bit of a uh, nepotist kind of uh, rule by the creek kind of person. Makes big tent organization and uh, then destroys his enemies just from within. Uh, the business plot it's a little bit different. There is uh, it's a little bit different. It's just completely the opposite. Uh, so their ideology, again, is like uh, Americanism, uh, the American creed or American dream. And uh, they're all about the military capitalism. Um, so, yeah, that's the center part. Then the right part is, again, about capitalism. Um, you know, they want, to, uh, they want to make tax cuts for the extremely wealthy. They want to outlaw unions uh, or at least seriously control them. And, um, you know, they want to make sure that American capitalism is safe. Uh, all that. And the left side, again, they're very much into the intrigue and stuff. Like, remember that with the business plot, you're turning back into America. Like, over here, um, with Long, you're going to be uh, called the American Union State. Have that flag that you saw earlier. With the business plot, you're actually called the United States of America. You go back to the, uh, you know, Stars and Stripes. So, um, their whole idea was that, or uh, their, all, their whole, like, um, message is that Long wasn't betrayed by the syndicalists and that they're realizing his true will, right? Uh, well, they're actually doing completely the opposite of what he wanted. And uh, to do that, they need the uh, Secret Service, essentially, to do a bunch of weird stuff. Um, they sabotage you know, local politics, and what's kind of funny is that they, re they uh, restart the Black Chamber, which was a uh, kind of American cryptography, um, you could say, uh, like, group uh, that was only unofficially called the Black Chamber, and uh, originally it, wasn't, it was meant to spy on, like, uh, embassies and... Uh, foreign diplomatic communication while here it's kind of um it's kind of implied that it's being used to spy on the citizens and what's kind of funny is that it references the memex uh, concept which means memory index if i recall correctly from the research that they did 
and it's basically like the proto internet in a way. It's uh, kind of like a electronic storage of data in a way that's done without a real computer, but with a weird device that you know hmm, didn't really like end up working. But like, yeah, they're using that to spy on people and uh, essentially keep logs on the population. Uh, so that's kind of dystopian. Um, and then they renew the Alien and Sedition Acts. Now, the Alien and Sedition Acts are, um, as it says over here, but were passed by President John Adams. Um, however, in real life, they were renewed uh, by Mr. Wilson, as far as I remember. Um, yeah, essentially, they were. They were renewed by Woodrow Wilson, and they were, like, complemented by some other stuff. I don't exactly remember what he did, but you can... There's actually this YouTuber, uh, I don't remember his name, but he makes uh, videos on American history that are really good, and he hates Woodrow Wilson. <laughs> he talks pretty in-depth uh, about... Uh, it's what's called, like, the Espionage Act or something. But yeah, essentially, uh, this is just, you know, a kind of way to... Uh, like bypass some of the constitutional guarantees that uh, the American Constitution gives to you know the judicial system and private citizens, so that you can essentially arrest whoever you want and uh, criminalize things like the syndicalists and stuff like that and deport them. Um, you have counterintelligence, purge dissidents, you know all the kind of stuff. And so the whole. Um, and then you also have the Red Scare, because of course, uh, now in real life you also had a first Red Scare. I'm not sure if this is going to happen in uh, the Kaiserreich timeline. I don't know, but in real life there were actually two Red Scares. The most famous one is uh, the McCarthyist, McCarthyist uh, Red Scare after World War II. But there was actually one after World War I that was prompted by the Russian Revolution. And um, yeah, it was actually a lot more violent than the second one. Um, because at that time you also had a lot of social and economic uh, opposition, you know, from the socialists that were at the time becoming more popular to uh, the American regime. Um, and that's pretty much, you know, uh, the difference with the second Red Scare. The second Red Scare was just a bunch of people inventing, the, inventing like, you know, communist plots and stuff to remove their enemies, like, you know, Oversimplifying, but that's basically what it was. Uh, while in the first one, there was actually a relatively genuine threat to America as a entity, and of course, it goes a little bit too far. <laughs> but yeah, you can read up on it. Um, anyway, you're gonna do that because you know you don't like communism, and in the end, a republic without democracy, because you know America's a republic, not a democracy. Uh, you don't want those unwashed, filthy peasants and uh, factory workers having any say in anything because, you know, business knows best. Um, and then my Eyes Have Seen the Glory is all about establishing the segregated states of America. It's just insane. Um, it's also insane because you have the Christian corporation of state, essentially, like the Christian Commonwealth Land. It's called the Commonwealth of America. And uh, the whole idea is that you're turning the government essentially into a corporation that gives like credits and shares to citizens that are like quote unquote worthy. And how you determine that is um, that you essentially have like racial, uh, I don't know, like racial identification, racial heritage identification, and um, you know, uh, just the state controls that and uh, decides who is like worthy to be a citizen or whatever so yeah it's um, not the best place to live uh yeah and you, you extend the jim crow laws okay segregation and uh, anti-black uh, legislation to the entire country and the rest of the right side um yeah it's just about establishing like the christian work you know, uh, Christian state, and uh, you make Protestant Christianity the official religion of America, which uh, is actually very much against what the Founding Fathers wanted, and um, 
segregation forever. You have the Silver Legion on the left. Now, as I've said, while the War Powers Committee are a bunch of, uh, you know, essentially, like, people who were groomed and born and raised in the elite, or that have, uh, you know, climbed up the ranks of the military, who are essentially all about that control by, uh, you know, by the shadows, from the shadows, and, uh, you know, making, making sure that things outwardly are as traditional as possible while controlling everything. Feli, on the other hand, just wants to take over the whole thing. They're, they're much more Nazi about it. Um, yeah, they're basically just the Nazis. Like, it's pretty obvious. Like The criminalized syndicalism literally establishes labor camps uh, for you know, concentration and labor camps for the syndicalists and you know the enemies of America or whatever. And then you absorb the clan as uh, your you know into the Silver Legion, which is already kind of a paramilitary organization. So you get you know uh, you get the paramilitaries running around enforcing uh, the state's will, and uh, you also get some of them to be like like covert operatives to spy on people, and. Uh, Another thing that you can do is that you can make the church seize wealth in the Covenant Sword and Arm. And in the end, America's burn again. <laughs> so that's what you do. Uh, and uh, if you have decided to pick the National Populists, you uh, get to pick America Abroad. Now, uh, let's, actually, um, let's actually see what options you have because I know uh, that... Uh, okay, so like the way that the foreign policy stuff works is that the League of American States is only for Huey Long, right? Uh, so the whole idea is to make essentially a Pan-American uh, security pact, essentially. To make sure that the peoples of the Americas... Uh, peoples of the Americas can be free uh, without having those, like, nasty foreign, uh, you know, imperialist people just coming around and... Uh, Coming around and ruining your, you know, ruining your day, um, and yeah, so it's basically just, oh yeah, you get the officers of vault, but uh, you know that's not really a big deal. So it's basically just like Teddy Roosevelt um, on steroids, essentially. You know, you carry the big stick, you make the arsenal of freedom, yeah, freedom, freedom. Um, Aggressive negotiations. I feel like that's a reference to something. Ah, uh, well. Uh, anyway, so... Yeah, I'm gonna just... Um, I'm gonna just cheat to make sure that I can see, you know, the, the things that are doable in uh, the diplomatic part, and then I'm gonna end the episode. Uh, I, because I know that with the War Powers Committee, uh, you get to join the Entente and uh, influence people with the dollar and, uh, you know, businesses. And then at the end, the American century. Uh, because you get the war plan gold, um, which is going to be for you to declare war on France. Now, the war plan, like, color stuff is a reference to historical American planning um, for, like, c contingency planning for wars of major powers, which were color-coded. Now, the most famous one was war plan red which was versus uh, Canada and the UK. But it was also like War Plan Orange versus Japan, um, Black versus Germany, and uh, something else that I don't remember. Now, uh, let's do this. Is that out of complete? Yeah, America Broad. Now, obviously, I don't have... Lux New Monroe Doctrine decisions. So the New Monroe Doctrines. Oh, okay. So if you are Peli, you can join the Reichs Pact, because of course. Um, now this might also be the case if you are the War Powers Committee, but I'm not sure because by the time that I had um, that I had picked America Abroad, I was like the Reichs Pact had already been defeated in my game, so I'm not too sure on this. But yeah, it looks like you can join the Reich's Pact. Now let's see if they will accept me instantly. Nope.
Huh. The states can have their rights for now. Yeah, again, like the the whole um, the whole shtick with the uh, Commonwealth is that you're trying to, you know, um, kind of uh, yeah. Have you read Matthew twenty twenty six twenty seven? Uh, oh my God, you're trying to like link. Oh no, okay, so you, yeah, they they get they they give me the right spot joining. Let's see. Now. Uh, to do full stop no checks let's see what you can do yeah oh well oh oops that's you declaring war it doesn't give you a verbal it just declares war oops well that's wrong anyway uh, so what would be happening is uh, yeah we need to actually wait a bit for everything to be Need to wait a bit for it to register itself. Yeah, you know, everyone's gonna join in against you. Uh, obviously, Mexico is here part of the international, so you know, they'd be they'd be fighting me. Sao Paulo declare war on Brazil. What? what? Uh, looks like uh, Julio Marcon de Salgado is trying uh, trying his luck against Vargas. Oh, it's the Paulistas. Okay, right, 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 right. I see. The Paulistas are trying to take down. Uh, Vargas, who has gone paternal autocrat, so, you know, there's actually a viewer of mine that's from Brazil knows a bunch about Brazilian history, so, uh, if you're watching Gupka, uh, <laughs> you would probably be pretty happy about what's going on over here. Uh, I guess he can, yeah, look, he, he, he assumed direct control of the Estado Novo. He's got that shit on lockdown, uh, but yeah, it doesn't look like there's actually the options that have turned up because I've used the uh, focus out of complete. And so that made the game not like me, which is sad, which is relatively sad. Uh, but yeah, so essentially, that's that. America Abroad makes you join under a faction, while the League of American States makes you uh, create your own faction, the League of American States, and uh, gives you a bunch of uh, decisions. Let's try to see if we can get those uh, to show up. American Legion... So that we're still Huey Long, and then I'm gonna end the thing because it's already getting way too long. Ha ha ha, that's a joke because Huey Long is long. His deck is long. Kappa uh, Kipo. Okay, so Fox Connor is the man we want. Now, um, I'm not sure if you're still gonna get the like veterans bill. Because if you appoint Fox Connor, I'm pretty sure the coup cannot happen. Uh, let's keep the capital in New Orleans, which is a really stupid idea, but whatever. Business plot, so, oh, okay, so you, you get the business plot to be exposed. And that's the same thing that happens with Pelly, actually. You're going to get the business plot exposed. And, uh, you know, the only thing that's changing is that after destroying the business plot, Pelly comes around and destroys Long as well. So yeah, what a, what a nice man. So yeah, as you can see, the War Powers Committee has been, you know, cut down, cut down to size pretty much. And uh, yeah, so here we go. Now we can take all of this stuff. Yeah, America, freedom. Come on, can't wait to see this freedom. Yeah. There we go. The arsenal of freedom. America. Yeah. Freedom. The Empire of Liberty. Wait, what? Apparently it uh, requires me to be the Empire of Liberty. I'm not sure what that is. Anyway, so you get... Uh, if you've played as MacArthur... You know this, um, because it's essentially like if you play as uh, some of the USA people, uh, you can also make the League of American States, or a thing that's, like, I'm not sure what it's called, but it's something like that. And so you can invite everyone by event. So, like, for example, if I were to invite uh, Mr. Vargas over here, it would be like, yeah, he joins instantly, because he likes Huey Long. Ha ha ha. Um, other people that generally like you are uh, Paraguay, but over here he is. <laughs> He's got Carlos. 
going down on him. Uh, so yeah, so you can invite everyone to join the League of American States. Uh, and uh, some people that you don't like, such as national populists and uh, and syndicalists, you can embargo with defending the Americas. So that's kind of funny. Um, no. Yeah, and then after that, you can declare it a war. Uh, so you get essentially war goals on the people that aren't democratic. Uh, or paternal autocrat. I'm pretty sure paternal autocrat is also fine. Yeah, okay. Paternal autocrat. So basically just national populists and uh, syndicalists are, you know, no bueno. And uh, so you can kill them. Which is always pretty fine. Now one thing that always pisses me off is that you cannot reclaim the Panama Canal, which just angers me to no end, but I guess with long it would make sense even in like a roleplay kind of sense to I don't know, just keep Panama in the faction as long as they as long as they're fine uh with being in the faction and being, you know, an American uh, American client essentially. He can let them keep uh Panama. Uh so yeah, that's basically about it. Uh -huh. I'm not sure how you get the Empire of Liberty, but fine. Uh, and so at, at the end is Pax Americano. So essentially, much more focused on the Americas than the whole wide world. So yeah, that's about it. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed the American Union State overview. And uh, if you want to try it out, it's a really fun little state. Um, pretty much with all free, um, all free thingies, all free. Um, paths. So yeah, uh, go ahead and enjoy it and uh, have a good day. Hope, to enjoy, hope that you enjoyed that. Uh, I'll see you soon.